on the council file management system and a, a few other things. Um, if you open your packet, you have a few uh, different sheets in front of you. If you open the, the big packet, the packet that you got first, and you look at the very first page, and you can see on the second slide, it has the purpose that is in the charter. So the charter is basically the, uh, the constitution, if you will, of, of the city. And it has the purpose there of neighborhood councils. Now I know uh, you, you're all aware of this, but for me, I've been with the department for, for nine months, but I still go to this a lot. It's kind of like my guiding star. So whenever, whatever I do in whatever context, I always think about, okay, so what's the purpose of neighborhood councils? So the purpose is twofold. <laughs> to promote citizen participation in government and make government more responsive to local needs. Now, how is that going to happen? How will government be responsive, more responsive to local needs? Well, you are a big part of that. If you're aware, now you're aware of the needs of your community, but are you aware of what your council member, the city council, and the mayor are doing for those local needs? Okay, so that's what this morning is about, is to learn about what are they doing, what are they working on, and how can you be informed, and how can you be connected, and how can you provide input on those different things. Now, on any given week, there are 100, 150 motions, different things the city council is working on. If you add that up week after week, week after week, it comes to thousands and thousands of issues. Are you able just mentally to keep up with that? No. Okay. So you need to be able to filter the things that are important for you and your neighborhood council and those things which are not. The other issue is there are a lot of things that are citywide and there are a number and there are a lot of things that are local to the council district and to your neighborhoods. That's another thing that you're going to learn this morning to how to filter those things and focus in on those things that you need to focus on. Okay. Slide. Now, this presentation was actually, I have to give credit to the city clerk's office. Uh, the city clerk put this together, and actually uh, someone who formerly worked for the department. Uh, it's a very good presentation, as you will see, uh, but I, I do want to give credit to the city clerk's office. These are basically the, the duties and the responsibilities that the city clerk does. The city clerk uh, plays a key role in recording what goes on at city council and presenting it and conveying it to you. So we won't spend too much time on this slide. Next slide. Now, this is the slide that they included, but I agree with these things. Uh, three things, critical things, information is power, which is what you're going to be empowered with this morning. The squeaky wheel gets the grease, okay? So your ability to stay in contact with folks, to let them know what's important for your community on a as continual basis as you can, it's very valuable. And politics are at play. So a lot of things, even you know, when ag agenda items are, are put on the agenda, um, are, they, are they moved immediately within three days? Are they moved within one day? All those things, there are many factors, many political factors that go into all those things. So you, I think, are already much more savvy than, than a lot of people. But as you continue in your work in the neighborhood councils, you will continue to, to learn and understand how to work within the system. Next slide. So this morning, there are going to be a few, a few sections. We're going to talk briefly about the legislative process, the committees, and the council file management system. Next slide. And then we will talk about how to track uh, the important issues through the early notification system. And then last but not least, we're going to talk about community impact statements which is basically the formal statement that you can make as your neighborhood council to present to the city council and put it on their agendas. Next slide. So the legislative process. So anytime you have a council member, okay, there are the 15 council members, one of them 
needs to introduce motions into the city council. When they introduce the motion, it goes to the president of the city council, which is one of the 15. Currently, it's uh, council member Herb Wesson. And it also goes to the, uh, the CLA, the legislative analyst, who also helps and supports the city council. At that point, the council president decides, does it go to a committee? There are a number of committees. There are uh, 15 committees and a number of ad hoc committees. So the council president can decide, does it go to the committee or does it go straight to the city council, to the full city council? If it goes to the, straight to the full city council, typically it goes onto the next agenda. And because of the Brown Act, they have to give three days to, to post that. So generally, it will go um, onto the following week's agenda. However, they can call a special meeting. And the special meeting means that it would go, it could be within 24 hours. So there are a lot of different things that can happen to this motion. What is most important for you is to be able to identify when the motion starts and from there see in which direction it goes. So we, I can't, you're not going to learn necessarily this morning all the different uh, avenues, but you're going to know where to start and, and where to get information. So basically it either goes to the committee or it goes back to council within a few days. Now if it goes back to council, it's moving very quickly, right? It means that within within three, five, seven days, it's going to go before the council and they're going to make some kind of decision on it. Now, if that's the case, how are you able to give your, your input on that, right? So if it's moving at that speed and you want to weigh in on it, then you need to do things. You need to be able to reach out to your fellow neighborhood council members, let them know, hey, this is an issue that's moving fairly, very quickly. You know, our neighborhood council has discussed this issue. We're at this general agreement on these things. You know, call your council member, um, call, contact the city clerk. So there are things that you can do. Even if it's moving quickly, there are ways that you can provide input. Okay? Now, if it goes to the committee, it's going to take a little bit longer to go through, and that gives you more opportunity to weigh in on a more formal basis. Okay? But those are basically the two tracks. It's either going to go quickly because it's going right back to council, the full council, or it's going to go through the committee process. How do you know it's going quickly? Uh, I will show you as we go on. Okay. You, you will see. You will see. There's an indication that you can see that. Okay. Can I move over a little? Just a little. No. Okay. No, because of the camera. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Reg, you're going through this. I'm standing on a boot. I'm standing. I, I am. He's marked. I'm you're marked. marked. Oh, you're there. Right. That's that's okay. there. Okay. Want to go left? Okay. Tell you that. Now, when, so basically, this motion by one of the 15 council members. So motion is basically, you know, you think of moving. Okay, they're they're they want to do something, right? So they're creating a motion. So that motion can be to instruct the department to do something. That motion can be that they want to hear a report. That motion can be transferring funds from this place to that place. That motion can be introducing an ordinance. Okay. At that point, that motion gets, a, if the president agrees to, to accept it, it gets a council file number. It's very important that you know the council file numbers because from that point on, it gets tracked by that council file. Now, you need to know that that council file number sometimes will get a supplement. So next to it, there will be an S1 or an S2 or an S3. So it will change as things get added to it. Sometimes the motion will get a completely new council number. It will be connected in some ways, but it will be a different number. That too, I'm going to share with you how you will know and how you will see when that happens. Okay. But for the most part, that council file number that it gets, be sure that you pay attention to that council file number. Now, that council file number gets reported on the council referral sheet. That's going to be your key. A little bit later, we will talk about that council referral sheet. It goes to the committees or to the council. 
Now, if it goes to the committee, the committee will make recommendations and send it back to council. The council is the one that does the action. It's not the committee. The com committee does a recommendation. It sends it back to the council, and the council is the one that is the be all and end all. Okay? Now, so the council votes, they approve it, they reject it, or they return it back to the committee. And so goes the process. Next slide. Most council actions require a, a simple majority, which is eight votes. An ordinance requires 12 votes. If it doesn't get the 12 unanimous votes on the first reading, on the first time it goes before the council, it needs to come back for a second vote. And as long as it gets a majority on the second vote, then it goes into law. But depending on the ordinance, sometimes it may require 10 votes. Sometimes it requires a simple majority. So it depends on the issue and how it's written in the charter as far as how many exact votes it needs to get. Okay, So that's why each, each case is somewhat unique. You said again, they said if it's not unanimous, then the item is held over for a second vote. How many was that? The second, vote. the second vote is generally a simple majority. So, so if they get eight or nine, okay. But it depends. It depends on the exact item. Sometimes it may require ten or, or more. Okay. But typically, yes. Is that a simple majority based on attendees or total? Total, because the total is fifteen. So eight is the, the simple majority. Yes. Okay. Next slide. So the committees, um, the. As you know, uh, today we have uh, certain members of the city council. Either tomorrow or Monday, we will have some fairly new <laughs> number of new members, right, and a new mayor. Um, so the committees will be will be rearranged with the new members. Uh, they typically up to five members, um, and there are seven ad hoc committees right now. Ad hoc committees just are extra committees that the council president has decided are important issues. And so they create these extra these extra committees. Okay. Uh, the responsibilities uh, they become informed of the city business and they oversee the functions. Uh, they re report information and make recommendations for the council. Um, they were formed for the charter, uh, typically every odd year by the council president, and by resolution adopted by the council. Um, now a number of things. So if you are trying to make an impact on a particular motion, on a particular ordinance, there are different places you can do it. Sometimes the most appropriate and the most effective place is to do it at the committee level. Okay. So they need to take public comment on the different items that they, that they hear. Uh, a number of times that happens at the committee level. So if you want to have time to really to say, you know, your voice, your opinion, to talk to the council members, it's at that committee level. Okay? If it's heard at the committee level and then it gets sent back to the, the full city council, at the full city council they may or may not choose to take public comment on that item. So there has to be at least one opportunity for you to verbally go and say your piece. It may be at the committee level, so, so don't wait until it goes to the full city council. Also, a lot of the items, okay, they are worked on <laughs> even before they're introduced to the council, they've already been worked on by the council staff. The, the particular city council staff, they've already worked on particular issues when they introduce it, right? Because they have to know what they're introducing. So that's one of the reasons it's very important that you have a good relationship with your council office, with the deputies, so that you know what things that they're working on, what things that they're looking at. Now, so once it's introduced, if it goes directly to council, it's going to be moving quickly. So you hopefully are able to weigh in. If it goes to the committee, sometimes it could go through the committee pretty quickly. It might go through the committee and be waived through committee and go right back to council. Or it may stay in committee for, for weeks years. or months or years. years. <laughs> Too much. Okay? If, if an item is not considered, it actually expires after a couple of years. Okay? So there are various scenarios, as you can see, that can happen to different motions. Now, if you're feeling a little overwhelmed, that's normal, that's natural. Okay? What you're going to learn today, again, I will repeat is how to filter 
a lot of these things now if you and your neighborhood council are able to weigh in on now i'm, I'm being very modest here but two three four five a half a dozen issues throughout the year and get your community engaged on them and able to impact a couple of them you're already doing a great service and you're doing some great things with experience with practice you'll be able to do more of that okay so don't so try not to feel overwhelmed um, and just be aware that the process can go in different directions but with time you will you will learn those different things okay so let's go let's go to the next slide uh, this uh, sheet basically uh, you have this sheet uh, we're not going to spend too much time on it but this sheet basically um, has the current organization of the city council the council members and it has all the committees and the ad hoc committees okay it lists the, the times and locations, who the chair is, and that sort of contact information. But all of that, a lot of that is going to change, um, so we won't go into depth. But when you're at home, if you want to take a look at that, you can take a look at that. Okay, And you will be able to find the new one online. Now, probably not immediately, because the council president has a lot of new members, and the council member, council president himself has to be re-selected by his colleagues, so that even that is not 100%, okay? Very likely that that, that will happen, but, so this is gonna take a little while for this new um, configuration to, to be formed, but once it is, you're gonna be able to find all this information online, okay? And I'll show you where you can do that in a minute. Next slide, please. So the council file management system is a comprehensive electronic file index of the council files. At a summary and detail of all legislation considered and acted on by the council. It contains records of legislation, commendatory resolutions, council votes, scanned reports, documents. Next slide, please. Now, lacity.org, have all of you gone on to lacity.org? Okay, this is very valuable, a very valuable resource for you, okay? When you go on, the first screen you're gonna see is this screen right here, okay? If you see, if you look where it has the city government, the, the red circled in red, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend that we're on the website and we're going through it together, okay? So, um, next slide. So if you click on that city government tab, you will get this screen right here. Okay. Most of the not yet. Most of the things. <laughs> most of the things that you're that we're gonna be talking about today are gonna be from this screen right here. Okay. This is what you're gonna be accessing most of the time as a neighborhood council uh, leader. So if you go to Council Files, Agenda, E-Packets, Contracts, and Ordinances, which is in, in red, and next slide, this is what will come up, okay? Now this screen is not very attractive, but it's very useful, okay? So you will be going to this screen. Next slide. Now another web page that you can go to which is separate from lacity.org. This is the city clerk's website. Okay, you can also access CFMS through the city clerk's website. So either you go through lacity.org or you go directly to the city clerk website. So those are the two websites that you can access CFMS from. Okay. Next slide. So the features of CFMS, the Council File Management System. You can do simple searches. You can do more advanced searches. You can do reports. The reports can be very valuable if you're trying to get information you want to report, it, for example, to your, uh, to your neighborhood council. From at home, you can create a report. At the next neighborhood council meeting, you can share it with everyone. It has hyperlinks to the reports, so virtually everything that the neighborhood council, that the city council is looking at, you can also look at. 
uh, all in one viewing. You can look at the, the activity of the file. Uh, you can look at the documents, the council votes. Um, and you can get email notifications, which is very valuable. Okay, so if you've identified an issue and you say, this is an issue that I want to follow, you can subscribe for that council file. And anytime there's a change in that council file, you will get an update saying that there's a change in that file. Something's happening to it. Okay. In, in a little bit, I will show you where you can do that exactly. Next slide. Back to this, back to CFMS. So you've come to, come to this glorious screen here. Okay. You see up in the red circle, you have the simple search, or you have the advanced search. Now in the simple search, you can put the word, for example, plastic bags. Recently, if you've been following, following the events, uh, there, there was uh, an ordinance that was passed regarding the, the plastic bags uh, ban. So that will bring up all the council files that have those words in the council file. Okay. Now, if you go to the help, you see the little red circle on the right, and you click on that, it will also take you to a screen, which is the next slide, please. What is the council file management system? How do I search for council files? So at your leisure, you can go deeper into this about the council file management system. Okay. Now, next slide. So we're back to, to our glorious uh, first page. Here you see that the advanced search was clicked. If you click on the advanced search, it brings out this menu. And you can see here all the different ways that you can search. You can search by the movers. So your council member, you can, you can mark his name. You can search by the title, the subject, a number of different things that you can search by. Next slide. <coughs> If you want to search by just the council district, you can do that. If you want to search based on the commission or the board, you can do that. Next slide. If you want to search by the date, by the acting bodies, this is another. These are other ways that you can search. Next slide. Yeah. Yes. On the simple search. Yes. You failed to mention that if you know the council file number. Ah. Yes. If you know the council file number, put that in there, and it will bring it up for you immediately. On the simple search. On the simple search. On the simple search. Most of the time, recently, I, I, I use the simple search. But um, yes, if you put in the council file number, um, and you put it in on a simple search, you'll get all the information for that. Uh, yes. Where it says council file on yes. my screen, I just type in the council file number, whatever it is. Yes. Council file numbers start with a letter, a number, or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. Tell everybody. Thank you very much. Number. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we, we will actually be touching on that in a minute, but uh, the council file uh, starts with two numbers, and then a dash, and then four additional numbers. The first two numbers are the year that it's introduced in. So if it's 13 dash number, 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 then it means it was introduced, created in the year 2013. So if you see a 10 dash, that means that the issue has been around for a while. It was initiated in 2010. Okay. If it's okay, let me okay, let me no, zip see. through and then we'll go through questions. Okay. Okay. Next slide. Um, prior slide. Okay. Up here, you see where it says at the top it has reports. So if you click on that, you can see there are different types of reports. Next slide. And for example, here, this search. All right, where did you click? Okay, go back. Go back one. Because if, you have all the results, which I used to use, and that works really, really well. Yes. So, so if you search for something, and it has a number of results, then there's an item where you can create reports. So there are various reports that you can, so it's on the top top right hand, right up there. Okay? So once you create the report, can I go to the next slide? Thank you. Next slide, sure. <laughs> this, 
this this is the type of report that you will get. Now this search produced 318 results. The search was too broad, probably, right? Because this is too much information. So you might want to go back and narrow your search. Similar to you know what you learned in high school or, or college when you go to the library and you search for different things. Same principle that if you if you're too broad, you're going to get a lot. If you narrow it in, you'll get fewer. If you narrow it in too much, you may, may miss something. So you go back and forth. Okay. Uh, next slide. And this is another report. So it's in a different format. So. Um, you'll see that there are different formats that will be more useful and interesting to you. This is just one more format that you, you may get your report in. Okay. Next slide. Now, remember the, the glorious first slide. Okay. You put in, let's say, plastic bags. And it comes up with, there, there, will pro, there may be more than one council file. You look at the first council file and you see the date and you say, oh, this is probably it. So you click on it. When you click on it, this is what comes up. Okay, so this is the first page that you see when you click on the council file. You see the council file up there. So what year was this uh, initiated? 2010. 2010, right? You see the title, you see the date that it was introduced, you see the last time it was, ooh, there's an arrow there, great, thank you Tom. There's a last change date, if you go down you see that it's pending in committee, you see the file activities, okay. Now, if you go to the center and you see the little red circle, if you click on that it will open up whatever that item is is attached to. Okay? You go to the top right hand corner, you also see the different online documents that have been submitted. Now, if you submit, if your neighborhood council submits a community impact statement, it will show up there. I think it's kind of cool. You know, you go on there and it says community impact statement submitted by Coastal San Pedro Neighborhood Council. Yeah. San Pedro. What did I say? Pedro. Pedro. <laughs> you told me about that, Joe. <laughs> you did. You did. You did. You did. You did. You did. Okay. Okay. So, Pedro. <laughs> so, not I lost it. Okay. okay. Okay, okay, oh yeah, you'll see the community impact statement. Now, now, is that, does, what does that mean? Is that going to change everything? No, probably not. <laughs> but what we're going to talk about a little bit today is using that as one tool in your toolbox. Okay, it's not the be all and end all, but it's one, it can be one tool in your toolbox. Now. Also, if there's public comment, any public comment will also be put into that screen. So theoretically, all four million people in Los Angeles, if you make a comment and they go on here and they click on it, they can see what you're expressing, whether it's you as an individual or collectively as a neighborhood council. Comment at okay. a national meeting. If you send any comment that you send in um, physically, whether it's in an email or if it's a physical letter that you send in, send it to the city clerk and you will have the contact information in your packet and you will see that later. Send it in, make sure that you identify the council file number. That's how they're going to be able to know where it goes. If you just talk about plastic bags, they're not going to know which council file to attach it to. Okay? So always, always, always include the council file number and it will go up there. Okay. Also, speaker cards. If you go and you speak at a committee meeting or at city council, that gets uploaded onto here. So 
be careful if you put, you know, it asks for your, your, your information, your address and all that information. Realize that it's going to be going up here, okay? What will also go up here is how your support, if you're supporting for, against, or other regarding the issue. So it's going to be part of the public record, public document. That also goes up here, okay? Question? Yes. You indicated a certain level of thought before you put your you indicated addresses, so yes. your your address may become public information. Yes. Can we use another method to identify your location, or maybe the, maybe the council uh, address, or sure, or you don't put an address. Okay. You'll still be able to speak. They'll still they'll still acknowledge you. Okay. Speak. Okay. Then here, council vote information. You can see how the council members voted on on this particular issue. Now. Last but not least, very important, if you look at the middle top, you see the two little uh, icons that have been circled. The first one, the little orange one, is the RSS feed. I don't know anything about RSS feeds, so I'm not going to be able to help you with that right now. But usually what they recommend folks to do anyways is the next little icon, which is the email icon. If you click on that, a little window will come up and it will ask for your email address so that you can subscribe to that particular council file. Put in that count, put in your email address, okay, and what it will do is it will send an email to you asking you to verify that you actually made that request. So within, usually within a, a half a minute, it sends you an email, go onto your email account, and just click yet. Yeah, Click the link and it will it'll say, thank you very much, you have now been signed up for this council file. Okay? Very, very simple. Next slide. Now, how to track the different issues. The city clerk website now you can sign up for a number of things. You can sign up for through the ENS, the early notification or early notification system. You can sign up for agendas, whether it's the council agendas, whether it's committees, whether it's commissions. Now be careful a little bit because there are a lot of agendas. So if you go on there, right, and you're like, "Hey, I'm so excited about this," and you sign up for all these things, you're going to be flooded with with agendas. Okay, if you've looked at some of these agendas. They're not the easiest to, to, to decipher either, okay? I talked to the city clerk's office this, this week getting ready for this presentation, and I said, well, why is it, you know, so convoluted or seems kind of not easy to follow? And they said, well, they themselves have, have thought about, you know, simplifying it, and, and other jurisdictions do simplify it, but any time they've tried, the city attorney's office says, well, we want to make sure, we want to make sure we cover all our bases, so we want to make sure everything's on there so the public doesn't feel uninformed. But the challenge is if you have too much information, it's just as well you weren't informed because you're overwhelmed and you don't know the information anyways. So, you know, it's it's, it's a balancing act. I mean, they want to make sure that um, that the people have all the information that, that needs to be out there. Okay. Same slide. Thank you. Um, the second item, which I think is in some ways maybe even more helpful than the agenda. Now, the agenda is very important. I won't say, I mean, it's incredibly important because you see what's going to be happening at the meeting, you know, the following week or the next day. So, so it is very important. And if you know what you're looking for, you can go through and you can say, okay, this is what I'm, what I'm looking for. But if you try to do this on a regular basis, if you try to look through the agendas on a regular basis, you're going to get discouraged. It's, it can be overwhelming, okay? My personal recommendation, and I think this is very helpful, and the city clerk actually will tell you this as well, is one of the better things, one of the easier things perhaps to follow is the council referrals. Okay, The council referrals, there is a sheet that comes out after every council meeting that lists all the items that were created at that council meeting. Right now, in front of you, you have one of those sheets. It's the only sheet that's in color. Find that sheet right now. <coughs> uh, 
Not a lot of color, but a little color. It looks black and white. It's it just. If you look really close, yes. If you look. The little red box. The little red box. Little red box. Okay. Okay. Now, this is for. You see the date. You see the top. Okay. There's. It's. It says one of three pages, two of three pages. The third page I didn't print out. I want to save paper, and you can go. Maybe this will entice you to go online and look at it yourself. But look at the first side. Look at page one of three. Okay. Look at page one of three. Look at the top. This is for the council meeting that happened on Tuesday, June 25th. On June 25th, these were all the new council files that were created. So this is the birth of a council file. Now, some of these new council files may have been another council file before, and now they're just, for example, there's a supplemental now. Okay, so there's an S1 or an S2 next to it. Okay, so just because it's on here doesn't mean that the issue has never been considered by the council, but for the most part, for the most part, you are witnessing the birth of a council file. Very exciting. Okay, now, if you look, you see the very first one, 11-0098. Okay, now, this is the birth of a council file, but there's an 11, so that's 2011. So this one clearly has some, some history behind it, okay? Continue going down. Continue going down. Now, if you look at the third one, you see it says CD1910. <clears throat> Underneath that, the next one, you see CD11. That's very useful to you. When you get the referral sheet, okay, you can very quickly scan down the left column and see your council district. Here, most people are CD15, right? Mm -hmm. Where's CD15? Any CD15. Some days, there won't be any CD15. Some days, there'll be two or three CD15s, OK? Immediately, you'll be able to say, ah, this is happening in my council district. Now, if it does not have a CD number next to it, that means that it overlaps council districts, or is a city-wide issue. Those are also very important issues okay, that you may want to weigh in on. So if you have a little extra time, can't fall asleep, you can go through the rest of them. okay. But some of them are very important to you and your neighborhood council. Now, remember at the beginning I talked about the charter okay, and the purpose of neighborhood councils? The word that keeps coming up is the local needs right in your neighborhood okay so sometimes the global is local right so sometimes the issues that are being looked at citywide are very pertinent to your neighborhood council but let me ask you this which issues can you potentially have a greater impact on as a neighborhood council the ones that are more local or the ones that are more broad? The local, right? Okay, just as when they talk about, you know how they talk about the elections, the national elections? People get excited about the presidential election and the national elections. But actually, the local elections, your council member has a lot more impact on your daily life than a lot of these federal folks do, right? It's more exciting to follow the national politics, but the local ones, as you all know, okay, I'm preaching to the choir. Those are the valuable ones, right? Okay, now, go back to the very top, 11-0098. Which committee is that going to? Everyone. To, no, it's going to the Ad Hoc River Committee. Look at, look at the next one. It's going to the Personnel and Animal Welfare Committee. Look at the third one, where that's going. That's going to council. So 
That issue is not going to committee. That's an issue that is going relatively, is going quickly. So what that means, and you see there, they say tentatively scheduled for July 2nd. So they already know that it's going to come up the next time we can, we can see it. And because of the Brown Act, they need to have at least three days. So the next time it can come up is July 2nd. So they're already telling you that it's probably going to be on the July 2nd agenda. So when that agenda comes out, you can try to identify it on that agenda. Okay. Fourth item, it's also going to council. Okay, it's not going to committee. Fifth item, it's going to committee, to Rules, Elections, and Intergovernmental Relations Committee. Last item, it's going to council. So within, in, the next, in seven days, approximately, it's going to be in front of full council. They're going to vote on it, and it could be a done deal. Yes? Is there a place to find definitions for things like the subventions and grants fund? That's a great question. I don't, I can't think of any right now, but that's, you know, great thing potentially uh, contact uh, the council office okay. to, to get information on that. Yes. Actually, um, the, for all the council committees, if it's going to a committee, each committee has a staff member assigned to that committee. Um, the legislative assistants, they are extremely knowledgeable. You can It'll be listed their name and their telephone number and their email, and you can contact them, and they, they are very helpful. Thank you. The, the, the committee is going to staff is also going to find Yes, yes, and also in the in the sheet uh, that you have, which is going to be changing, but it has also all the committees and the contact information. Yeah. Okay, so let me time check. Um, although, all, oh, Tom. So what time, what's the goal for ending this, this session? 20 minutes? Five minutes. The next one's to 10.30. Oh, oops. OK. 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 So do we, do we have all the presenters here for the next one? Uh, is he called Doug? No, I think they're OK. OK. So we'll, we'll it's going to take a few more than ten, five minutes, but, but, but let's, let's move on here. OK, so council file referral sheet, very important. Let's go back to the slides. Uh, yes, you can go to the next one. How to advocate for important issues. Build your rapport with the council offices, the city clerk's office, the departments, the commissions, and each other, the different neighborhood councils. Um, let me give a plug to, to Hank, the Harbor Alliance. That might be a wonderful way for you as a region to organize yourselves. You already are doing that. You already are organizing yourselves. But I would encourage you to do this. Not every single person has to be looking at every single council file. Okay? A lot of these issues, as they come up, some people in your neighborhood will hear about them before, before you may. If you're involved with your Harbor Alliance, they could be a great source to share and disseminate that information. So that might be a great way to, to organize yourselves. Next slide. Yes. Uh, so if you look here, uh, this is another tab. You can go to departments and bureaus. You can get information there. Next slide. Um, under, under the city government, Council and committee meetings. This is a, a, another uh, tab that you can go under. I'll let you explore that on your on your own. Next slide. If you do searches, uh, for example, for early notification system, these different links will come up. You can use those as well. Next slide. Now, this is this is very important one. So subscribing. So if you want to subscribe to these referral sheets or any other agendas, here's how you do it. You go to the city cover government tab and you go to subscribe to meeting agendas and more. Next slide. When you click on that, you will get this screen. It's the very first one where it says council, council committee, and ad hoc committee meeting documents. 
Okay, the very first one. You click on that. Next slide. And you will get this screen. This screen is where you sign up. You put your, your name, your email, and do you see where it says council documents under number two? It says council actions, council agenda, and new council items, referrals. That's the referral sheet that you were looking at, the third box. Okay? So if you sign up for the new council items, that's it. The council actions, the first one, which is journals, that's after the fact. That gives you what they already did. Okay, so those three little boxes, the journals, the council agenda, and the referrals are, are quite useful. My preference, a good way to start, is with the referrals. Okay, next slide. Community impact statements. Oh, go, go back one slide quickly. On the bottom right hand corner, you see in red on here, um, I actually put the link that will take you to the screen immediately. Okay? So if you go to that link, it will take you to the screen immediately. Okay? Next. Community impact statements. This is where you as a neighborhood council, so let's say something has, has gone to committee. It's an issue that you've been working on for a while. Okay? A community impact statement is not something you're going to be able to do for something that's going right to council within three, five, seven days because it's too fast, unfortunately. Okay, but if if an issue is goes to committee, okay, you'll likely have an opportunity to do a community impact statement. So, let's say you identified on the referral sheet you saw something happening in CD15. And you see that, oh, this is right around the block. It's within our neighborhood council. Hey, this is an issue that's important. Okay. Let's weigh in on it. So you put it on your agenda. Okay. You discuss it. You take a vote. 15 support it, three don't support it, one abstain. The president, or the president can designate anyone to, to write a letter, say, this is how we voted. This is our opinion on the matter. We respectfully and humbly and gloriously submit it to you for your consideration. Now, when you create that type of community impact statement, use it not just to submit it so that it gets on this file, OK? Do that so it's official and it's formal, but CC and send it to everyone else. Okay? Why not? It's an issue that the council member is going to be weighing on. Send it to him. You know, you can send it to who's the deputy that's, that's working on it, right? Because a lot of times that person, that contact person, that deputy is going to be more of a resource than the council person themselves, right? phone calls forward the letter to them let them know that you submitted a community impact statement okay and give them a phone call and say hey this is this is what we submitted this is how our neighborhood council feels on this does it need to be just one council one one neighborhood council person who does this no other people can as well okay so remember the you remember the slide the squeaky wheel gets the oil you know you can, there are different ways that you can contact and express, you know, your community's views to your uh, council person. The media, you can also, right, you can share, you can share it with, with local blogs. You want to get the word out to the public, right? So, so share it with other folks, okay? That way you're, you're, you're building some, some consensus within your community, okay? And that can be that can be all helpful for, for what you're trying to do. Now, let me also say that things aren't always as they seem. Okay, and these policies and these laws and these motions aren't always as they seem either. So one of the things you might want to do before you take a hard action and, and start, you know, fighting for, for a certain issue is you want to get you want to be informed. So you want to contact the council office and say, hey, we're thinking about weighing in on this issue. We'd love to get 
you know, what are you thinking about this? What, what's, what's going on here? Please give us, give us insight on this so we can make an informed recommendation. Okay? So all those things as a package work together. Okay? Now, next slide. So it's a way to make your community's voice heard. Um, the community impact statement is indicated on the official agendas of the city council. It becomes part of the council files. So in addition to that document being put on the CFMS, a community impact statement actually gets onto the agenda. What gets onto the agenda on each item of the agenda, whether it's in a committee or in the full city council, it basically there's a line, if you notice, it says community impact statement submitted. Many times it says none. That community impact statement submitted is exclusively for neighborhood councils, no one else. So if it says none, that means there weren't any neighborhood councils that submitted a community impact statement. Now, there's so many issues that go through that you can't be expected to weigh in on every single issue, okay? But if you do, it will go on there and it will say, Coastal San Pedro. <laughs> and support, yes, support, no, or other. So that will be on the agenda. Now, if people want to to read what you exactly said, they have to go to the council file to read it, but at least your neighborhood council will be on the agenda stating if they supported it, yes, no, or other, okay? Next slide. You can look at this. This will give you some tips on how to formulate your community impact statement. Next slide. There are a few ways that you can you can submit your community impact statement. One way is there's an online access system that we have. Up to five people in your neighborhood <coughs> council can get access to this. Your president will delegate, can delegate folks for that. Once you decide who that is, you should contact your NEA, your neighborhood empowerment analyst. Okay. So just just call just call the uh, the department and say I'd like to speak to to my NEA. Our president has designated me as one of the five who can submit community impact statements. Okay. Once you're on that list, you will get a code and you will be able to sign in and submit those community impact statements. Okay. Now. Besides doing it online, you can also submit it directly to the city clerk. So if you go to the next slide, please. You can email it to, to Sharon.Dickinson at LACity.org. You can fax it. You can mail it. You can hand delivery. So all those options are there for you. The formal way is to do it online, but you can also do it in these manners, in this manner. Okay. Do I have three more minutes? That's good. That's it, right? That's good. Okay. Three. three. Okay. So, so let me show you. You have one handout, and we're almost we're almost done. Another handout that you got looks looks like this. Okay. Here you have a sample community impact statement, two samples actually, two, two separate community impact statements. Now the very first page you see it says contact information neighborhood council, Greater Griffith Park Neighborhood Council. Okay? You see the person who submitted this, and this was submitted official, this was submitted through the online system, okay? The name of the person, the contact information. The type of board action, were they for the proposal, were they against the proposal? And then at the bottom, a brief summary. Now, 
You don't have to spend too much time on this. Turn the page. You can see that this is the formal community impact statement that they put on their letterhead. Very important. When you have when you make an official statement, put it on your letterhead so it identifies you. Okay? You can see that this letter was actually sent to the mayor. Okay? If you look at the second page, you can see who else it was CC'd to. It was CC to Tom LaBonge, Eric Garcetti, and additional folks. Okay? So they also submitted this as a community impact statement. So they wrote this letter, they sent it out, and they said, hey, why don't we as well use it as a community impact statement? Get more bang for our buck. Look at the next page. This is a second community impact statement. This one was from Mid-City Neighborhood Council. The name of the person who submitted it, email, contact information, etc. Look at the next page. This is from Mid-City Neighborhood Council. You see how this one is a little different than the last one. This one says all the information of who voted, how they voted. Okay, and you can see that this one was more with the intent of doing the council file management system. So this is a different a different way of doing it. Okay? Yes, Diane. And we use yet a third way of doing it. Okay. We we pass resolutions and in our resolutions we have background information that is the information we want them to know. Yes. So we attach the actual resolution. Um, Perfect. Also if you attach the minutes, that's also a helpful tool. Okay, you must, it, it asks for the minutes actually. It, it does ask for your minutes as well. So in addition to the, the information and your letter, brief is good, as I'm not brief right now, <laughs> enough, yeah. and the, um, and your minutes, okay? So last slide, last couple slides. Um, there are a number of slides. Go to the... Please go to the almost the end. Go to page 25. Go to page 25, which is slide 49 and 50. So 49, slide 49, page 25. There you go. Okay. These last three pages are links for you. Okay. So this one has links to the department, the city clerk's office, <coughs> LA council file, council media, city website. Next page, please. Uh, the council district, I don't know if uh, CD15 is here yet. CD15? No? Okay. No, me meaning uh, represented from the office. The office, the member, I believe his name is Dennis. He, he gave me these links. He wanted me to share them with you. Okay, so these are additional links that, that are very helpful. Okay, the city calendar, if you look at the audio recordings, okay, if you want to listen to audio recordings, if you want to look at council meetings versus committee meetings, next slide. <coughs> the, the charter, municipal, and administrative code. Uh, the council referrals, which I already talked to you about how to register for that the meeting agendas, and the city directory. Okay, next slide. <coughs> so I will conclude with saying we started with the mission, we're ending with the mission. Please use this statement. The more times I've read it, I think it's actually very beautiful. I mean, I, I know, you know, 12 years ago, they spent a lot of time creating this, I'm sure, putting this together and creating the city charter. This statement is very valuable for you. Always go back to it. Using as your guiding star. Whatever you do, whatever actions you do, think about, okay, are we promoting more citizen participation? Are we getting our local community more involved? And are we helping to make government more responsive to local needs? They go hand in hand. The more participation, numbers matter in politics, right? So the more people we have, the more people we are involving, the stronger we can be in, in our voice. Okay? Uh, thank you so much for your attention. <laughs> have a great rest of the day. Thanks, guys. So um, um, I want you.
you know, actually, really quick story. The the person who introduced me to community impact statements was Ron Galperin, who used to be part of the Bel Air Beverly Press Neighborhood Council, and he.